my name is Janusz and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, anomaly detection in predictive maintenance uh, for uh, SQL uh, Server. And uh, before unpacking uh, all of this, uh, quick uh, housekeeping. Uh, this session is uh, one hour long. Uh, I'm going to uh, deliver it in uh, English, uh, but uh, there's massive advantage. I do accept uh, questions in Polish. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's the uh, first time I'm uh, delivering this session, so there might be some uh, glitches, uh, but uh, yeah, that's normal, uh, I guess, normal uh, without uh, you know, any uh, preparation. And uh, also, uh, this session is uh, level 300. Uh, I'm going to uh, explain some uh, uh, de definitions, uh, yeah, because uh, we have to be on the same page, but uh, uh, I expect half an hour uh, to uh, to uh, show you uh, just anomaly de so de anomaly detectors in action. So uh, I expect a lot of demos uh, in SQL, in uh, Python, and uh, Scikit-Learn mostly. And uh, this session is intended for uh, DBAs and uh, SQL Server professionals. Uh, and the uh, scope of this, this session is also very, very wide. Uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions uh, at uh, any uh, point. And uh, let's start to, uh, from unpacking uh, this uh, title. And uh, let me start from the end. So SQL Server, I hope uh, I don't have to uh, explain uh, to anyone what uh, SQL Server is, uh, but uh, my uh, quick uh, observation. So. Since Microsoft introduced uh, R services and uh, later uh, Python and most recently uh, Java and uh, Scala, uh, there are few and uh, far between uh, good examples uh, that could uh, show, uh, you know, advanced uh, analytics techniques and uh, uh, in the context of uh, performance operations and uh, monitoring. And uh, I find it uh, quite uh, strange uh, because. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we as DBAs, as, as uh, SQL Server professionals, uh, sit the closest uh, to data, and uh, we sit the closest to uh, analytical engines. Uh, so instead of uh, like simple examples of uh, scoring uh, credit applications, we should be able to uh, uh, run examples on learn on, on examples that uh, actually show, uh, uh, let's say, more advanced uh, uh, operational analytics and uh, something that uh, we, could, we can uh, use uh, our domain uh, knowledge and uh, we can uh, apply our expertise. So uh, main motivation behind this session is uh, to address this issue. And uh, so now uh, <laughs> that's a quick uh, di digression, but uh, uh, anomaly detection. Uh, in uh, general, data science answers uh, five uh, questions. Uh, so uh, first one, uh, you know, is it A, B, or maybe C? So that's classification. Another, how much, how many? That's regression. Uh, third question, uh, what's the structure? So segmentation, clustering. Uh, finally, mm, uh, so uh, what's next? Uh, control and uh, reinforcement learning. And uh, then we have anomaly detection. So uh, questions about is it normal or is it weird? And uh, today uh, I'm going to uh, show you how to answer uh, this uh, question, normal or weird. And uh, that's uh, about uh, anomaly detection. So now predictive maintenance. Of course, uh, we do maintain uh, databases. Uh, we look after data, uh, so it indexes. We uh, design a phys physical table layout. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, what do we do to, to prevent uh, downtime and to uh, reduce uh, probability of, of uh, uh, time where our databases uh, are not in operational state. So usually we introduce a redundancy, so, uh, which is uh, quite expensive. We design high availability and uh, disaster recovery solutions, and uh, we uh, react. So uh, we, uh, instead of uh, like proactively monitoring uh, some uh, metrics, uh, we do it in a more reactive fashion. Uh, we uh, like jump uh, onto problem when it's uh, usually too late uh, because we don't know a class of this problem and uh, we don't uh, try to uh, just uh, go into the future. And uh, in the context of uh, predictive, uh, the origin of predictive maintenance is not in uh, IT. 
uh, it is in a manufacturing uh, industry. So just uh, imagine that uh, uh, factory uh, builds another production line and uh, then puts it in read-only mode, uh, which would be like uh, unthinkable. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, for predictive maintenance, I'd like to show you a quote from uh, Jack uh, Walsh. And uh, if you haven't heard about uh, Jack Walsh, uh, he uh, was a long-standing uh, CEO of uh, General Electric. So, under his management, uh, General Electric uh, share, uh, shares value uh, increased 4,000%, uh, uh, which means he was clearly uh, onto something. So, here's that quote. Uh, change before you have to. So as simple as that. Uh, so build yourself time machine, teleport your DBAs, uh, ask them to uh, found uh, whatever uh, you know broke, if anything, and then uh, they should come back and, and uh, fix it. Uh, actually, it is a, a very uh, powerful technique uh, that applies to uh, all aspects of uh, business. And uh, business people, uh, they want uh, to uh, do M4. M4 stands for you know make me more money. And uh, that's uh, just predicting uh, 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 market change or, or uh, you know, environment uh, change is uh, a way to uh, uh, reduce uh, probability of, of downtime or, uh, in this case, uh, uh, business operations. And, uh, of course, uh, that's a business quote. And uh, for us engineers, that would be probably find change uh, before you have to. And uh, today we're going to find changes. And uh, before I uh, talk about uh, a bit about me, I'd like to take this opportunity and uh, thank the organizers uh, for inviting me uh, uh, again, second time in a row, and uh, the sponsors. Go and talk to sponsors, and uh, the sponsors for great venue, fantastic party yesterday. So if you go there, leave, leave your business card, party can be even better next year. So think about yourself. And uh, quick, uh, about, quickly about me. Uh, I've been working in the financial services industry uh, for more than a decade. And uh, I specialize in real-time trading platforms, high-frequency trading, algorithmic trading, uh, with different asset classes in, and uh, instrument types, including Forex and uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, most uh, so why anomaly? Uh, because uh, most recently I've been uh, doing a lot of projects in uh, uh, compliance, uh, so compliance reporting, uh, AML, anti money laundering, uh, KYC. Uh, so know your uh, know your customer. So these are elements of of managing uh, uh, risk. And uh, also uh, why I'm here? Because five years ago I decided to change before I had to. I used to be DBA, but I decided to to move uh, into cloud, and now I'm. Uh, uh, certified uh, cloud solutions architect and uh, deploying and building uh, applications uh, on both uh, AWS and uh, Azure. That's quickly about me and uh, agenda for today. As I said, uh, actually we've already covered a good portion of, of definitions, but uh, I want uh, you to be on the same page and uh, I'm going to uh, precise some, some of these uh, definitions. Uh, so general definitions first. And uh, then I'm, uh, we are going to build a uh, few uh, anomaly detectors. Uh, security is the most important, so uh, password spraying attack first. Uh, that's uh, edge case, but I'm going to uh, explain that. Uh, then we're going to look at uh, query store impact. So what happens when we enable query store? And uh, finally, we'll end up uh, with uh, flow control. Uh, slowness. Actually, that should be flow control activity that uh, suggests client sl slowness. Uh, and uh, most of these examples uh, come from real-world uh, solutions, or they, ha they have some elements of real-world solutions, and also I use uh, real-world uh, data. So these are not uh, synthetic uh, examples. And uh, we already know uh, what uh, anomaly is. So if we answer uh, this uh, you know, question, is it normal or is it weird, uh, we can uh, look for uh, anomalies. But uh, how about, uh, and uh, uh, also anomalies are uh, usually have a very negative uh, uh, connotation. Uh, for instance, we are looking for fraud, fraudsters, so that's fraud de detection, uh, or we are looking for uh, Faults, that's fault detection, or intruders, intrusion detection. But uh, don't get me wrong here, because uh, not all anomalies are wrong. 
so uh, I mentioned uh, financial services industry and uh, you know professional investors they look for uh, anomalies in market uh, pricing in uh, risk and uh, asset uh, allocation uh, all day after uh, you know every day and uh, I remember it used to be the case if you wanted to buy Bitcoin going through intermediate steps and going through intermediate uh, uh, cryptocurrencies uh, could uh, generate uh, significant savings. So not all anomalies are uh, wrong, but uh, actually today we're going to focus on, on these bad anomalies. Uh, so we know what are anomalies, how about outliers? Is there a difference between anomaly and outlier? What is in general uh, outlier? And I've been conducting interviews and every time I, uh, I uh, interview uh, data engineer, these are uh, uh, questions uh, I, uh, I ask. So what sort of uh, answer do I expect to get? Uh, first and foremost, uh, anomalies and outliers are completely different terms. They are not synonyms, they are uh, different. So anomalies are in the real world. Uh, anomalies happen in uh, like process or, or uh, uh, some uh, entity and outliers are inconsistencies in data. Uh, we, let's assume, uh, so, uh, Quick example, we assumed some distribution and uh, one or few points uh, uh, that we recorded, uh, they don't follow this the distribution. Uh, so this is an uh, outlier, but we don't know if it's anomaly or not. Because uh, to verify if it's anomaly, we would have to go uh, to real world and uh, you know verify uh, state, uh, so uh, just uh, check that uh, we didn't introduce that uh, outlier uh, the way we uh, decided to, to capture data, the way we decided to collect and process data. So, uh, you know, presence of outliers doesn't mean uh, these are anomalies. And, uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's about uh, the difference between anomaly and outlier. And uh, one, another thing, uh, anomalies uh, require definition and also context. And in some cases, that's not enough. Uh, you have to provide a distinction and uh, a category. So uh, if you go to a data scientist and ask him, okay, this is my data, please find uh, you know, anomalies. Uh, first thing he will ask, uh, okay, give me context and also provide definition of anomaly. <laughs> so, uh, okay, that's my data, but uh, why do you need definition? <laughs> I, you know, if I can uh, do it myself then. Uh, and uh, depending on fraction of uh, anomalies, uh, we can uh, use uh, slightly different uh, approaches. So when this fraction is very, very small, uh, we can use outlier detection. And uh, when this fraction is, uh, let's say, under like 5%, uh, it causes a lot of problems because uh, standard uh, like uh, data scientific uh, uh, approaches and tools, uh, they uh, don't uh, work very well. Uh, so we have to uh, remember about assumptions and we have to uh, handle this uh, very high uh, class imbalance. Uh, there are a number of uh, methods to, uh, to handle class imbalance and I'm going to uh, mention just, just, just a few uh, before uh, providing examples. Uh, so uh, that class imbalance is uh, very, very normal. Uh, usually uh, there's like less than 1% or 2% of uh, anomalies in a, in a data set. So uh, what can we do? Uh, because uh, uh, that uh, causes uh, a lot of problems. So uh, we can uh, uh, oversample uh, our uh, outliers, uh, which means we will uh, duplicate them, for instance, but uh, that uh, causes, uh, you know, that comes with, uh, with uh, uh, shortages and, uh, and disadvantages because, uh, because, there's, uh, because of risk of uh, overfitting. Uh, we can uh, undersample, uh, so uh, from uh, observations that look, uh, look uh, normal, uh, we can decide uh, not to include uh, all of them uh, in a training uh, uh, portion, but uh, that's, uh, you know, that, uh, that's, uh, that comes with a risk of uh, uh, losing uh, actual real features and introducing uh, outliers uh, in a data set. And uh, also there's like a very creative way of, uh, of uh, generating uh, new anomalies based on existing uh, uh, identified anomalies. And uh, that's, uh, for instance, a, a smoke method, uh, synthetic uh, uh, generation. So uh, there are uh, methods of, of uh, handling uh, uh, 
uh, anomaly, uh, so, uh, high, very high uh, class imbalance, and uh, I'm going to uh, mention, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, go back to them uh, where, uh, when, we, when I show you uh, how to evaluate uh, uh, models. And uh, if, uh, uh, if there's uh, like more than, uh, let's say, 5% or like significant number of observations uh, look like uh, uh, anomalies, uh, and uh, so they look uh, like uh, they were uh, generated by process, uh, completely different process altogether, uh, we can try to uh, model distribution of, the, of uh, this process on its own. Uh, and uh, our first example, when I show a password spraying uh, attack, uh, that's uh, edge case, because 100% uh, of, of uh, our observations uh, will be anomalies. Uh, any questions so far? No? Good. And uh, let's put our uh, knowledge in practice, and uh, can we find anomalies here? How do you think? That drop represented by A, or maybe that spike uh, by B, or this uh, uh, you know, change in trend, uh, like a systematic uh, acceleration of, of trend, because there's like a slightly uh, uh, upward trend. How do you think? Which, which one is an anomaly? Aye! <laughs> None of them. Uh, anomalies require context and definition. I didn't give you context. I didn't give you definition. These are just good candidates for outliers. That can be related to data. So how we uh, you know, uh, capture data, how we process data. Uh, these are not anomalies. We don't know anything about real world. We don't know about process that generates this time, uh, time series. Uh, so we can't uh, say these are uh, uh, outliers. They don't even have to be aligned with, uh, so real uh, anomalies don't have to be aligned with these outliers. So these are just good candidates for outliers. And uh, uh, so after verification, we can go back to real world and verify against uh, our, our definition. So again, context and definition. Otherwise, we simply can't, uh, can't talk about uh, uh, anomalies and uh, there's a number of services and uh, companies claiming that uh, you know they actually perform uh, uh, let's say unsupervised anomaly detection so that doesn't require any uh, expertise and doesn't uh, need any uh, like domain knowledge uh, or experience actually what they do is just uh, outlier detection and uh, that's it uh, they don't uh, provide you know they don't know what, what is anomaly in real world and uh, uh, what, what they only uh, do uh, is, is just uh, outlier detection. Okay, so that was quick test. <laughs> uh, and uh, depending on available data, uh, we can divide uh, anomaly detection problem into uh, three different uh, classes. And so you probably uh, have uh, seen that uh, before. So uh, unsupervised uh, data. Uh, which means uh, anomalies uh, can be uh, in that data, but uh, they are not labeled. We don't know uh, uh, which observations are anomalies or not. And uh, this particular uh, class uh, uh, causes a lot of problems uh, because, uh, you know, feature engineering, feature selection, uh, how to optimize model, how to even evaluate uh, uh, detection. Uh, they, these are uh, very, uh, very difficult uh, tasks. We don't, uh, basically, we don't uh, know the target. We don't know what to optimize for. Uh, and there are like a special uh, method uh, I'm going to uh, describe after, after explaining supervised. So that was uh, unsupervised, and uh, it was more unsupervised is uh, the most uh, common uh, uh, case. So that's the closest to real world. Uh, you, you shouldn't even, even knowing a definition of uh, uh, of uh, anomaly and context, uh, at least you have to perform very basic checks. You have to verify all, all assumptions because uh, usually it's uh, unsupervised anomaly detection. And uh, there's a case of uh, semi-supervised. So in this case, uh, uh, just uh, pretty much similar to uh, taking baseline uh, in benchmarking. So we know what is good state, but, uh, and we are measuring uh, deviations from our good state. And uh, in that case, uh, its uh, anomaly detection is actually uh, named as uh, uh, novelty uh, detection because we are looking only for uh, for inconsistencies uh, comparing to our baseline. Uh, for instance, uh, one class uh, SVM. That's an example of uh, 
uh, semi-supervised method because uh, it uh, accepts or it uh, expects uh, uh, providing uh, uh, data without uh, anomalies, so it can uh, learn uh, what, what what's good, and then it, it can uh, find deviations from from our uh, known state. And uh, finally, supervised uh, anomaly detection, and uh, that's where our uh, data contains anomalies, and we know about them, so they are uh, correctly labeled. And uh, as I as I already mentioned, uh, so semi-supervised and supervised also they require performing at least uh, basic uh, checks. And uh, so, but uh, what to do uh, in a real world with unsupervised? Uh, that's the most common uh, example. And uh, yeah, we have to find a way, a good way of, of handling that. Uh, actually, there's iterative uh, process. So first, uh, we can uh, look for, uh, we can use very simple methods uh, to detect uh, outliers. So unsupervised uh, outlier detection. Then we can uh, uh, take these findings, go to real world, verify our uh, findings, and try to explain if uh, if we uh, see you know uh, similar uh, patterns in the uh, real world. So it's like a, a iterative process of uncovering uh, true definition of of uh, anomaly. So uh, at the end of this process, we want to formulate a definition. So because uh, unsupervised uh, machine learning and supervised methods are, are very, very difficult. These are challenging, and uh, uh, if it's possible, we should uh, chain, change them into uh, uh, s uh, supervised uh, anomaly detection, if it's possible. In some cases, it's not possible. And uh, for instance, uh, uh, you know, in multidimensional uh, data, anomalies uh, uh, manifest their nature under some special conditions we are not aware of. So what, what to do with, uh, in uh, that case? Uh, you know, we can uh, try to continue uh, using uh, unsupervised methods, but uh, usually we need more data. We need more dimensions. We have to uh, introduce uh, something uh, that uh, can actually take, give us advantage, Some, something that can uh, give us uh, leverage. Uh, any, any questions? OK. And uh, let's say we have model, and we have a process of, of uh, uh, finding uh, anomalies, how to evaluate uh, the, these uh, models now. And uh, in a supervised uh, version, when we ha have labels and, and we are aware of, uh, so our data contains uh, anomal, uh, abnormal observations, uh, it's fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, so we can use uh, confusion matrix and uh, just uh, there's one catch. Uh, we have to remember about highly imbalanced data. Uh, because uh, usually we focus on uh, accuracy and precision. But uh, let's say our data set contains like 1% of anomalies and uh, remaining points form like a straight line. Uh, so our model would uh, you know, easily find uh, you know, best fit for straight line, flat line. Uh, so in theory, precision will be like uh, 99%, which will, sounds great. But uh, our, actually our model is uh, terrible at finding anomalies because this 1% that is uh, abnormal, uh, uh, simply uh, we, we, uh, that model couldn't uh, find. So there is, and uh, this problem is also called uh, 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 precision uh, paradox, uh, so accuracy paradox. So we have to remember about that, uh, that one. Uh, instead, uh, we have to focus on uh, other uh, metrics. And uh, first is recall. This is a number of uh, uh, true detections divided by total detections. And uh, another metric is uh, false positive rate. So uh, number of uh, false, detections, fa false detections divided by uh, total detections. And uh, we want to uh, maximize recall. So uh, it should be as close to one as possible, because we want to find all anomalies. And also, we want to minimize uh, false positive rate, because uh, we don't want to generate uh, any uh, or uh, large number of, of uh, false uh, detections. So how to handle uh, unsupervised uh, case? Uh, this is quite challenging. And uh, there's like number of, of methods. And usually it's uh, uh, about uh, uh, using different uh, models, the different uh, techniques, and uh, comparing uh, results. So ordering uh, results uh, from the most probable anomalies to, to, to less probable, and uh, uh, then uh, looking at, uh, at uh, correlations and run uh, correlations between them. And uh, finally, uh, data locality, uh, because uh, 
ideally, uh, we like to uh, detect anomalies in real time. And what does it mean? It means uh, uh, we should, uh, uh, you know, get or uh, analyze uh, data as close to data source as possible. And uh, data locality is uh, the ability to bring computation very close to your data instead of another way around. So we're not lifting data and put uh, and sending this uh, uh, over the network. Uh, and uh, depending on our intentions, depending on uh, what sort of anomalies uh, we want to uh, detect, uh, we have a number of uh, options. One of them is uh, we can try to uh, uh, perform anomaly detection on a database level, but uh, actually uh, f features or uh, tools are very limited because uh, yeah, we shouldn't actually use uh, SQL for uh, advanced analytics. And uh, SQL CLR is almost a thing uh, of, of the past. And uh, there is a native uh, real-time uh, scoring, but it is almost uh, only limited, on, it is limited to Microsoft uh, models. Uh, on instance, there's uh, nothing that we are interested in. And uh, finally, on server, we have ML services. Uh, and uh, also we can install some framework or, or analytical engine on a server. And uh, finally, if it's okay to uh, transfer that data uh, over the network and accept uh, latency in a, uh, in a production, uh, then the sky is the limit. Any questions? Am I too fast, too slow, too loud? <laughs> no? Okay, uh, let's... Uh, that's pretty much theory I wanted to... Uh, to uh, uh, deliver and uh, now we can start building our uh, models. Uh, security is the most important uh, like process in uh, any uh, company in an enterprise. So I'm going to, uh, to uh, start from uh, uh, password spraying attack. And uh, again, anomalies means context and definition. So let me provide you some context first. So I was uh, hired to uh, assess uh, possibility of data breach. And uh, long story short, support engineer opened port 1433 on internet, and there was production multi-subnet uh, cluster. And uh, that was uh, going, uh, that was uh, uh, unnoticed for uh, a week. And, uh, you know, that, that caused like uh, quite a lot of this in error log. <laughs> Uh, but uh, which means, uh, you know, all, all these events, uh, all these um, failed login uh, attempts, these are all uh, anomalies. And uh, this is a edge case because we're going to explore that data. We're not going to uh, uh, build a model yet. And uh, it was perfect opportunity for me uh, to uh, check uh, one hypothesis. I because uh, I've been. Uh, uh, I think that uh, you know people are getting smarter, and they use uh, like uh, automated tools, automated uh, attack vectors uh, that uh, can actually, uh, uh, you know, not hammer uh, database with uh, uh, as many as possible uh, number of requests uh, per second, but uh, they can try to like sneak in, and uh, they can tr try to uh, stay undetected, and uh, this is uh, what uh, password uh, spraying is. Have you heard about password spraying attack? So instead of uh, focusing on uh, like single uh, target, uh, I can spread my attack over like a number of, of uh, different targets. And uh, 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 to stay undetected, a number of, uh, of uh, these requests, number of, of uh, guesses of uh, passwords have to be very small. And a more advanced uh, version would be uh, to assume uh, that uh, on the other side, there's uh, uh, not a numerically robust algorithm. Let's say it, uh, it's based on a mean or interquartile uh, range. Uh, so if we start very small, uh, we'll be like de detected uh, once, and then uh, over time uh, we can increase uh, attack rate. Uh, so uh, I uh, so in this uh, all, all uh, you know data set of, of attacks, I, I was looking for like straight lines that uh, starts uh, start low and uh, gradually uh, increase. That would uh, uh, confirm that uh, there is somebody uh, actually uh, tries uh, password spraying attack, and also password spraying attack is called uh, invert, uh, inverted uh, brute force attack. So uh, let's have a look at demo. Uh, 
I use the log parser to uh, extract data uh, and uh, yeah, this time uh, through uh, all the uh, demos I, I use uh, CSVs. I don't have act active connection to database. That's, that makes uh, a bit uh, more portable. But uh, yeah, log parser to extract uh, data from uh, error log right into CSV, which is uh, straightforward. And uh, I'm here. Uh, so this time, uh, exploratory analytics. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I just imported uh, modules. Do I have to uh, like go line by line? Probably you will run out of time. So uh, okay, now uh, some helper function to uh, uh, do uh, IP lookups. Uh, can we trust IPs? Of course not, because they are too easy to uh, spoof. But uh, it, these are good uh, m uh, markers for uh, attacker session. Uh, you know, we we can uh, like uh, show or plot them on, uh, on uh, like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, globe, but uh, again, we shouldn't uh, tr trust uh, IPs. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, so, data is very simple. Uh, we can uh, geolocate IPs, yeah, just to. to draw some map. Of course, we can trust, but uh, as you can see, uh, we have Poland here. <laughs> so somebody from Poland was, no, yeah, as I said, you can't trust IPs. And uh, let's look at uh, actually how this uh, attack unfolded, uh, because uh, over time, uh, that was, I was like more interested in, in uh, uh, behavior of, uh, of uh, attackers. Uh, little Picasso moment, but actually it is uh, easy to explain. So uh, we have uh, uh, scanners and uh, their behavior is uh, uh, just to, uh, you know, uh, check if it's uh, uh, still, uh, let's say, server is, uh, or a port is uh, still open. And uh, we have uh, like uh, true attacks. Uh, so people actually uh, trying to uh, brute, brute force attack. So uh, hundreds uh, requests per, uh, uh, per second. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, I was looking for, uh, as I said, straight lines, uh, password spraying. And uh, I didn't find that uh, in uh, this uh, data set, but uh, I checked my uh, hypothesis. And uh, what, uh, what's uh, quite interesting, and uh, how can we use that for pred predictive maintenance? Uh, because uh, I mentioned uh, that cluster was uh, multi-subnet. Uh, so we can uh, find the time uh, it took the same IP uh, uh, to attack uh, so uh, both nodes, uh, both uh, nodes of, of uh, uh, the cluster. Uh, so that uh, should indicate time that uh, actually uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, when uh, this uh, security misconfiguration, secure net network misconfiguration happens. And uh, in this case, uh, it was uh, 38 minutes. Actually, that cluster was hosted in AWS, and AWS, both AWS and Azure, they provide uh, their IP ranges. So there can be attackers uh, looking on, on that ranges. So uh, that was, uh, yeah, it, it might affect you as well, but uh, I'm going to use this as, as an indicator uh, to, uh, uh, to perform some actions that I can uh, provi provide, prevent this, uh, this attack from, uh, from happening. Uh, so, quick uh, summary. That was edge case. So, all observations in the error log are uh, anomalies. And uh, what can we do? So, we have half an hour before attack starts, and uh, let's assume that uh, you know it can happen, and this security mis misconfiguration actually can uh, take place. Uh, so, obviously, we sh we should uh, monitor. Uh, uh, error log, uh, and uh, there's uh, that's probably the best uh, best uh, way. And uh, we shouldn't have any, any like extra uh, information in error log. L let's say uh, you know successful uh, uh, backup uh, backups. Yeah, we, that should be disabled. So error log is for errors, and then uh, for in uh, this case anomalies. But uh, how about slightly different approach? Uh, because uh, we can. Uh, attack ourselves. So if we know that uh, third party companies uh, and uh, can access our database and there are some rules in firewall, uh, let's uh, 
uh, create a service uh, that uh, actually uh, you know uses some uh, impossible path. And the, the moment uh, it uh, succeeds, uh, it means that uh, yeah, something is, is very, very wrong. And uh, also, uh, in that particular case, uh, you know, we can't prove anything uh, based on, on uh, attacks uh, uh, that uh, without a successful uh, audit login. We can't build an, any behavioral uh, model. We can't uh, verify if these uh, attacks stopped because they were successful or not, or, or because somebody ran out of time. So. Uh, 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 also, it is very important to uh, uh, audit uh, successful uh, uh, logins. And uh, for attackers, worst, worst enemy, uh, somebody that can reveal your uh, your position, that's of course other attackers. So uh, when you successfully uh, attack, uh, first thing you should uh, think of is to, to uh, close this uh, vulnerability. So to, uh, to uh, protect that, uh, that host from others. Uh, any questions? Again, edge case, uh, all attacks, uh, these are anomalies. And uh, this time, uh, so in this case, uh, query st store impact, uh, we're going to uh, look at uh, really uh, class imbalance and we, we are looking for, uh, for uh, uh, let's say, first outliers and then anomalies. And uh, quick context, uh, Microsoft claims that uh, enabling uh, query store uh, will cost you like 3 to 5% of performance. Uh, unfortunately, they don't uh, provide definition of performance. So this can be, uh, you know, a processing rate uh, measured as a number of batch requests per second or something else like uh, CPU usage. And uh, so m my idea was to uh, to uh, verify that uh, numbers. And uh, what's more, I don't have a definition of anomaly th this time. So that's uh, unsupervised uh, uh, anomaly detection. And uh, also, uh, in ideal world, uh, we would uh, just uh, simply uh, record uh, 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 tra trace on, on life, representative trace on life, and then uh, replay that trace on uh, uh, our uh, testing environment and repeat that, the same process uh, with uh, query store enabled. And so we can just look for differences and uh, find, uh, uh, look for uh, anomalies. But uh, in case of query store, it's not possible. Uh, because uh, we can miss out uh, non-deterministic events. So events that are related only to, uh, to uh, query store uh, life cycle, like uh, purge or uh, cleanup uh, events. So uh, to uh, capture them, we would have to uh, run this or capture uh, trace on life for a very, very long time. So instead of uh, that approach, uh, I'm going to use uh, uh, data available in uh, DMOS performance counters uh, DMV and uh, this is uh, unsupervised anomaly detection this time. So I don't, I, I don't know, uh, uh, I'm looking for inconsistencies in data first uh, and then I'm going to verify against uh, real world. And uh, quick, uh, I think uh, yeah, I'm not going to uh, go through uh, all performance uh, 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 monitoring, but uh, just uh, briefly, uh, how do we monitor performance? How do we uh, tr troubleshoot performance issues? So there are two different ways. One is uh, uh, confirmatory, where we can when we can come up with hypotheses and then uh, uh, gather evidence and try to uh, uh, you know accept or you reject our our assumptions. Or, and another is exploratory. That's uh, uh, that's where we uh, build models, so we have access to all data, and we try to come up with uh, some model that represents this data. But uh, you know, all uh, there's number of, of uh, problems uh, in a second approach because of uh, causation correlation, because of bias variance. So, do we have enough data, or is uh, our model uh, good enough? And of course, local optima uh, and a uh, number of uh, other issues. Uh, so uh, I recommend, uh, or uh, usually I, I do like first approach, uh, confirmatory analytics, and uh, I traverse uh, this hierarchy. So first I try to understand data, then I go through workload and finally internals. Number and uh, size of requests versus number and size of re uh, responses, that's usually data, so network activity. Uh, for workload, uh, so uh, transactions, batch requests per second, uh, uh, and uh, uh, execution uh, statistics. And internals, that's, uh, you know, then you have like a good understanding of what's going on. Then you can focus on, uh, on uh, execution plans, on a uh, physical table layout indexing strategy. So always this, uh, this hierarchy, data workload internals. And uh, for those of you 
just uh, quickly about uh, about uh, query store. So query store is low level. How many people uh, have been using query store? Okay, so uh, like that's not maybe, maybe not anomaly, but like ten percent. <laughs> Uh, so query store is low level flight recorder with a unit of work query and query is query text executed in uh, in some context uh, what's uh, special about query store and uh, that you can't get from any other external third party uh, tool uh, it has access to uh, uh, statistics available in actual execution plans uh, which means it can get uh, information about uh, uh, 10db usage, uh, memory uh, consumption, and uh, weight stats. And uh, to get this information, to extract that information in any other uh, uh, tool, it's, uh, you, you would have to uh, introduce uh, you know, significant load on server side. Uh, so that's why query store is quite special. And uh, let's, uh, let's uh, have a look at the, at the, at the demo. Uh, this time, uh, as I said, I, uh, I used uh, a very simple uh, framework to capture uh, uh, metrics uh, available in, uh, in uh, DMS performance counters. Uh, and uh, of course, I'm interested in uh, everything uh, generated by uh, Query Store, uh, plus uh, some uh, indication of activity and uh, and uh, memory usage that's it i i, I wanted to uh, uh, you know to, to be this uh, this model quite uh, portable and where i can apply it uh, to, to a number of instances so that's our uh, source of data uh, and plus there's a monitoring uh, framework for uh, so just a simple framework to, to capture this data over time uh, let's uh, look at uh, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, our data, and uh, let's look at demo from uh, Python. Uh, last time, so we're going to uh, import uh, that data, and uh, quick observation: uh, this uh, uh, quartiles. Uh, Obviously, we have, uh, you know, that's the case of a very high uh, class imbalance. Uh, and uh, helper function, and then uh, let's uh, plot that data over time. Uh, so there's like, uh, I can see uh, three weeks uh, worth of data. And uh, you can uh, like see that's, that's a weekend. And uh, then uh, again, uh, Monday, Tuesday, uh, so on. And uh, as you can uh, notice, uh, we have these uh, spikes. And uh, let's uh, look at uh, correlation. So uh, uh, what can we do? Can we reduce that, uh, that uh, dimensionality? Uh, because ideally, we'd like to work on a very simple model, so as simple as, as possible. Because sooner or later, we would have to explain these models and explain the decisions to somebody. Uh, if uh, if we uh, have like a very complex model, we, that means we have to uh, you know apply some some uh, uh, um, sophisticated preprocessing just just to feed data uh, into our model, uh, and uh, also uh, explainability is, is uh, not that good. Uh, so uh, first thing, uh, even before feature engineering, uh, yeah, let's try to simplify uh, our data, and. Uh, just a quick look at uh, correlations. Uh, so they are not li linear. Uh, we, in theory, could use a PCA, but uh, we're not going to, <laughs> uh, because uh, that there's uh, like assumption that uh, correlations should be uh, uh, linear. We have another way of of uh, handling uh, this uh, high dimensionality. Uh, so let's focus only on uh, uh, the variables uh, generated by query store. So that's uh, CPU usage. Uh, physical reads, uh, logical reads, and uh, logical writes. And uh, that's what probably uh, you know, differ differentiates us from uh, like external companies and, uh, and uh, data scientists, because we know that they, these are not independent. Uh, they, uh, they depend, uh, for instance, CPU usage uh, depends on network activity and uh, storage uh, I.O. 
Uh, so we can treat them as like uh, you know uh, independent uh, variables, uh, and uh, uh, that would be probably you know first mistake that uh, somebody without this domain knowledge, without uh, expertise and others understanding context will uh, will uh, do. Uh, so uh, that's. Uh, Uh, that's uh, data from uh, query store and uh, we can uh, notice uh, that it follows uh, very similar so all these variables follow very similar uh, pattern so uh, uh, most of them uh, they are like uh, zero they are not active uh, for a very long time and uh, then there's uh, some uh, very, very short period of, of uh, high activity and uh, so uh, we can continue uh, like trying to build model with uh, all these uh, uh, all these variables uh, uh, let's say exposed but uh, uh, initially we're going to represent all of all of them as cost and this is very similar to uh, let's say data throughput uh, uh, unit uh, in uh, in azure uh, the, the, the azure sql uh, database and uh, uh, that's uh, we're going to uh, you know a lower dimensionality of uh, feature space so uh, instead of like uh, handling uh, uh, you know four uh, different uh, or almost the same behaving uh, variables uh, we're going to replace it with uh, one and uh, then uh, when we re reduce that to a single feature uh, we, we can use uh, first uh, very simple models and uh, uh, look at uh, like heuristic uh, models and then compare them to, to more advanced models and when we decide uh, because we are still looking for outliers we don't know what is anomaly here uh, when we uh, uh, build some uh, some uh, you know context and, and uh, definition of uh, of anomaly then we can use uh, so then you can again uh, uh, expand uh, this uh, to uh, uh, to uh, four variables uh, so that's my uh, cost function. I uh, gave it, gave some uh, weight, some you know, best uh, pretty, pretty much uh, <laughs> knowledge. And uh, let's have a look at uh, this cost. So uh, th that's a cost that represents actually a query store. Uh, we can uh, look for uh, and uh, again iterative incremental. We have to uh, look outliers and then verify against the uh, real world. Uh, let's uh, look at uh, uh, class imbalance. So if if we assume that uh, okay, when cost is uh, greater than one, uh, uh, then uh, we can uh, you know try to find uh, uh, what's the uh, ratio between uh, these abnormal cases against the normal cases. And uh, if we like zoom in, that's uh, because that's uh, our three weeks uh, horizon. If we zoom in and uh, and uh, look at a single day, that's our representative day. And uh, you can free, uh, you can see three uh, spikes here. And uh, actually, I verify these spikes. Uh, I uh, like uh, you know observe that uh, behavior on the live. And uh, this, uh, let's say, spike is normal because there's end of day processing around uh, like 10 p.m. And uh, uh, that's uh, something expected. So there's like external, uh, you know, a lot of uh, reports are being generated. Uh, a lot of uh, after that, uh, some maintenance jobs, and uh, there's uh, internal memory pressure, and uh, page, page life expectancy drops, uh, uh, and uh, you know, behavior of co or cost of uh, query store is is uh, you know as expected because uh, we remove that portion of of plans that uh, that are used by uh, query store. So uh, you know this spike is normal. <laughs> uh, this spike that follows the same pattern, but uh, that one uh, look. Uh, so uh, page life expectancy uh, occurred after after this spike. Uh, so uh, this is uh, quite abnormal. So first I tried to use query store uh, to to find out uh, yeah what's going on in the middle of the day like uh, at noon. Uh, that uh, was unsuccessful because query store uh, doesn't uh, uh, it. Uh, Tracks, but it doesn't uh, uh, allow you to, to uh, see internals of, of query store. Uh, so uh, I run uh, some trays, and uh, yeah, these are uh, queries uh, that are causing this uh, this uh, high memory uh, uh, pressure. Actually, these are internal queries of query store. So uh, that's where purge process uh, happens. Uh, which uh, suggests that uh, you know this is uh, like real anomaly. So that's uh, something uh, or a combination of uh, of these uh, metrics uh, 
you know, is, is, uh, uh, indicates a real anomaly. So again, uh, we have three outliers, but uh, just uh, one of them is, uh, is true anomaly. Uh, but uh, first, we're going to verify uh, slightly uh, uh, so simple uh, models. First, we'd like to uh, you know find all all of these. We have time minute, ten minutes left, so I'm going to speed up. Uh, first, we want to uh, find uh, these. Uh, 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 let's say all, all these all of these outliers because uh, you know on its own it's uh, it's uh, it can be quite valuable. And uh, then we're going to use more advanced technique and. Uh, uh, and to find a detector that uh, can, uh, you know, observe uh, this as a combination of, of uh, other other variables. Uh, so, again, some helper methods, and uh, that's uh, these are uh, our outliers. So uh, these are like where uh, query store cost is uh, above one. Uh, we can uh, so uh, probably the most popular is to use the standard deviation and uh, or uh, sometimes uh, z-score uh, to uh, find outliers. Uh, but uh, depending, do we have access to all data or not? Uh, should we do it like in a, in a chunks of data, so uh, rolling uh, uh, version? Uh, it, it's not uh, very you know, numerically uh, robust because uh, it is based on uh, average value, and that average actually changes and is influenced influenced by our uh, anomaly. So uh, we were able to find only you know uh, 43 outliers out of 131 uh, uh, because uh, you know this this uh, let's say. Uh, Lack of memory or short, uh, short, uh, uh, very short uh, memory. Uh, that is uh, that uh, depends on uh, uh, on the parameter. So uh, uh, window uh, uh, width of uh, uh, length of window, and uh, which means uh, you know we would have to uh, know this particular problem up front uh, to uh, uh, select uh, right uh, uh, length of of uh, this window, and. Uh, that's uh, not uh, great because it's uh, you know right now we have like uh, free anomalies or free outliers a day, but uh, that's that doesn't have to be the case. Uh, mean absolute deviation, so slightly uh, better method, uh, still uh, you know not great. But if you, for instance, use Datadoc, uh, Datadoc uh, uses uh, uh, that uh, to uh, detect uh, outliers. Uh, this time we're looking for uh, deviation, uh, so mean the, the yeah deviation from from the mean. Uh, IQR. Uh, so uh, if you use Azure SQL, uh, Azure uh, uh, Stream Analytics, uh, you have uh, there's an uh, uh, operator that actually uh, performs IQR. So you interquartile range. Uh, Again, a rolling version. Uh, you can uh, just uh, calculate uh, uh, quartiles and then uh, you know look for uh, ranges, uh, so uh, uh, work, uh, work ranges. And uh, outside of of this uh, work range, uh, these are uh, uh, these are outliers. This time, uh, yeah, we got uh, 87 out of 131. Still, we are in very simple models uh, yet, so they are not capable of, of uh, finding uh, or detecting true anomaly. Uh, so first, uh, density-based uh, uh, model, that's uh, DBSCAN, uh, quite popular. And uh, we have to provide a minimum number of samples to, to build a neighborhood and then distance, like radius for a uh, sphere. Uh, but uh, that's uh, clustering. But it's not like uh, you know k-means clustering, which is uh, uh, which uh, where we uh, like provide number of clusters we expect to see. Uh, this algorithm can uh, uh, you know create uh, or find uh, as many clusters as as it uh, uh, as it uh, thinks it uh, there should be. And uh, again. Uh, Sort of good values, and uh, local outlier factor, another uh, density-based uh, clustering uh, method. This time, uh, we uh, instead of uh, like uh, providing uh, distance or radius, uh, we, we provide a number of uh, neighbors, and uh, density is based as a function of uh, of uh, so distance. Uh, slightly better, but. Uh, Still not great. Isolation uh, forest. Uh, first example of uh, of uh, tree-based uh, anomaly detection. And uh, 
uh, tree based uh, have a massive advantage because uh, they are not uh, non parametric uh, they uh, don't uh, they handle uh, missing values and they don't assume any, any uh, uh, distribution so they are not like uh, oh there must be gaussian distribution and then i can uh, look for uh, uh, something uh, like uh, that uh, hides in the tail. No, uh, in this case, uh, uh, no, they can handle numeric, both numeric and categorical, uh, categorical variables. And uh, uh, Twitter, uh, that's a time series uh, that includes uh, uh, seasonality and trend, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to explain because we have five minutes left. Uh, it takes uh, some time. And uh, finally, uh, one class SVM. And uh, one class, uh, that's semi-supervised. One class means, uh, you know, it accepts only, so it learns only on, uh, on uh, good behavior. And uh, uh, we have to provide, uh, so to, we have to train it, train it uh, with, uh, uh, without outliers, and then you can look for uh, uh, deviations from, from normal state. And, uh, Usually, uh, one class SVM, because of uh, special properties, it can handle uh, nonlinearity. Uh, is like a way to go. It's uh, it's uh, like a, a go to uh, go to algor algorithm. And uh, now uh, I mentioned that uh, within class uh, imbalance, that uh, actually yes, we we just found all uh, outliers, but we identified that only you know f f uh, during the day only one is anomaly because uh, they are like expected behavior. So how to find this? And uh, in this case, uh, you know, class imbalance is even higher. And uh, uh, first, we have to expand uh, these, uh, all these properties. And we have to uh, create some, uh, some features. And uh, yeah, I tried to be uh, quite smart. Uh, I thought that, uh, that that would be like uh, very easy. Uh, mm, uh, so I, I, could I could differentiate these states just by, by looking at proportions between uh, these uh, uh, metrics, but uh, that wasn't the case. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, instead, uh, that's our original data. We have to uh, uh, so give uh, algorithm a chance. So provide uh, data uh, that uh, lacks. Provide the data that uh, actually represents uh, you know few uh, observations uh, from the past, and uh, then we can use uh, SVM. This, in this case, SVM and identify our anomalies. So uh, yeah, because of this uh, combination of, of uh, 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 so relation between uh, metrics and uh, our uh, 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 new features, uh, it's uh, uh, it was able to find anomalies. All right, uh, that was uh, query query story impact. So average is like whoever tells you uh, tells you that uh, you know average performance impact is X. You have to verify that because there can be some cases that uh, actually it's like 10x over a very short period of time and nothing uh, uh, in uh, like remaining the part. Uh, you have to monitor query store and you have to keep query, uh, keep query store size as small as possible, uh, which is quite counterintuitive because you want to capture probably uh, as many execution statistics as uh, possible. Uh, but uh, that actually affects the uh, performance of your, of your database. Unfortunately, I, I don't have enough time to, uh, to uh, take you through uh, flow control uh, 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 slowness, uh, but uh, yeah, I will just uh, maybe try to show you a demo. This time I wanted to uh, mon so actually use Query Store to monitor uh, network performance. Uh, because uh, network monitoring is quite difficult uh, in, in the cloud. So uh, some features, some tools that you use on premises are not, not easily transferable. And uh, I want to have like some, a tool that can tell me that, uh, you know, client performance uh, slows down uh, or like there's a degradation of communication channel. And uh, flow control is a, me a mechanism to uh, limit uh, transfer rate uh, so uh, to limit uh, like uh, uh, sender uh, sends uh, data in reliable uh, way. So uh, there's uh, so always on uses uh, flow control, and of course TCP/IP uses uh, flow control. Somebody asks for large chunk of data and can't uh, you know consume it fast enough. It uh, it means uh, acknowledge uh, uh, message will contain zero uh, window. Uh, or information about zero window. So not enough, uh, there's uh, no space in, in a receiver uh, buffer uh, and uh, SQL has to slow down. So has to like uh, stop with uh, sending this data back to client. And I wanted to find these, uh, uh, these uh, anomalies. 
not going to take you for, for this one, but uh, I'm uh, interested in uh, uh, wait time. And uh, it's uh, in query store, it's cate categorized. So uh, async network IO that actually uh, represents uh, uh, zero windows are in uh, network uh, IO. Okay, uh, time. I'm not going to show you a demo, <laughs> uh, but uh, just uh, key takeaways for all this uh, presentation. Uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, uh, take uh, this, uh, these uh, points uh, or like. Uh, with you after this session. So first and foremost, anomaly is not outlier. So outliers in data, anomalies in real world. Uh, and simply data is not enough. You have to use your ex expertise, you have to use your domain knowledge, otherwise you can't find outliers, you can't formulate even uh, what anomaly is. And uh, that direction, unsupervised, supervised, that's quite common, but uh, not uh, easily, uh, not, not very easy to, uh, to execute. And uh, finally, uh, use as simple models as possible. And if you're comfortable, uh, if, uh, uh, if particular uh, case is covered by uh, the simplest model possible that you can uh, explain, uh, it's probably the best. And uh, C uh, CTA can't be anything but uh, yeah, fine change before you have to. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs>